Welcome to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? With your host, Louisa Barton. I want to be a famous rider. I should like to race. Presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. Truth is, I help horses with people problems. Now here's the Brit on the bit, Louisa Barton! Yeah, baby! Yeah. The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook, and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa and our television broadcast sponsor. Thank you for joining us on the Horse Talk Show this week, presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. Broadcasting from rather warm and sticky studio <laughs> at the CEP Studios, Equine Studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital of the world. Uh, it's a little warm in here. We have an AC issue this week, so if we seem to be perspiring in a very unladylike fashion, just think of us as horse girls. I'm here with Natalie Solomon. Thank you, Natalie, for being with us. Thank you for having me. From the Green Pharmacies, and we're excited to have her. We're going to actually have a segment later on the show. We're going to chat a little bit to her about what she does and why, and some of the success. But this week, I just rolled her into co-hosting with me. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a warm week to do it, but, you know, it is what it is. Well, anyway, thank you for joining us. Just want to mention Jenna Rivera. Um, to you. Her family is struggling a little bit at the moment with some health concerns and the Florida Horse Park, one of our media sponsor companies, um, has jumped in as they always do to try and help. Uh, thank you to Jason Reynolds and the team there. They're going to have a superhero 5k run for Rivera with a one mile option. That's going to be from 9 to 12 on May the 8th and the location, as I said, the Florida Horse um, Park. If you want to support from a distance, you can actually send donations. The information is on there for that. $25 for participant, groups are welcome, um, and all proceeds, all proceeds will directly benefit the Rivera family. So I think that's really important if you can get involved. And if you can't get involved, and if you can't do a 5K run um, or a one mile option, just make a donation and um, that money will all go towards the situation currently for the Rivera family. They are certainly in our prayers and thoughts. I'm going to talk a little news. Um, first of all, Ukraine. The conflict yeah. in Ukraine certainly mm -hmm. affecting people and animals. Um, a, a really a terrible, sad situation, of course, there. Um, we just recently were actually down in Wellington. Um, for the Mustang movie uh, opener down there and actually stayed with a really really sweet lady who is a doctor um, in the Wellington area and she's actually from a town in Ukraine that is under a great deal of pressure right now with refugees there because they're closer to the Poland side so certainly we're concerned about all two leggeds but since this is the horse talk show we're going to focus on the four leggeds right now and that is that as many of you know um, the United States Equestrian Federation has put together and set up some funding to directly help the horses that are involved in this conflict. So far, 350 tons of feed and shavings has been delivered and over $75,000 has actually been raised. Sounds like a lot of money and a lot of help. Um, they have actually set up a logistical hub that can hold about 40 horses. Um, that is almost at capacity and that hub is in order to move those horses to the EU as soon as possible. Over the course of the next 30 days or so, there's going to be at least another 2,000 horses that need to be evacuated out of the war zone. So you can only imagine having somewhere that's uh, only got space for 40 horses. So more is going to be needed. They need a lot more help, a lot more help. You can go to the FEI website. Um, for more details about that and um, you can donate and help maybe you can send feed and hay um, whatever you can do to help that situation there is a new electronic system now set up for equine evacuations horse owners can actually register evacuation for their horses from war zones um, and the financial side of all of that is covered at the moment by funding 
um, from the fundraising. So if we can keep helping there, an owner can actually have four horses in the queue at a time with a request to evacuate. So if you're listening um, from somewhere and that is a situation for you or you know people who are, you can actually go ahead and register up to four horses at a time so that you will actually then be in that queue to get those horses evacuated as soon as it's possible. So we're certainly hoping to see that um, be successful. Those horses, we have to be the voice for the horse. Yes, we do. They certainly can't do anything. Mm -mm, They rely on us. (laughs) Right, they don't even know what's going on. All of a sudden there's, you know, bombs going off. And and there's a couple of um, towns in Ukraine that have been under siege since February 24th. And there are horses there and the people are not just desperate themselves for supplies, but honestly can you imagine you know february 24th to now wondering where you're going to get your hay and your feed and your bedding and all of that sort of thing from so Mm -hmm. certainly a a very dire situation for horse owners and and a big concern large animal to look after and feed in a in a bad situation so land rover kentucky of course is uh coming up very soon at the end of this month the entry list has actually been posted with 57 pairs entered from the US, Brazil, New Zealand, Ireland, Great Britain, Germany and Canada. Um, Buck Davidson, one of our locals, actually has four entered. And Will Coleman, also a local, um, who's been on this show several times with us, has three entered. And that's April 27th to May 1st. And I know that Clayton Fredericks will have entries and a number of others of our local eventers around here. So that's a wonderful, wonderful event in Kentucky, of course, the Land Rover. Um, very sadly, um, Eric Lamars, of course, the Canadian Olympian, very, very well-known uh, show jumping rider, has decided and announced that he will be retiring from competitive show jumping. As most of you know, he has been battling uh, brain cancer since 2017. Very sad. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has gone on and competed and continued to win and do well. Good for um, him. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's a major health challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and we all know just even the treatments alone can certainly take you, you know, to a, a whole level of, um, of feeling unwell. So he's carried on. Um, he certainly is a winner, but now his health has actually forced him to retire. He's stepping into a teaching position. He will continue to win, I'm sure, mm-hmm. as a chef de keep of Canada. So we'll look forward to seeing him looking after the Canadian team and teaching others to be as great as he has been throughout his entire career. So congratulations to him on being chef to keep of the Canadian team. And we know he'll help them to go on and win as much as uh, he has in the past. Watching the Derby Trail, of course, and looking at those Ocala connections, excited to see Mark Cassie in there with Papa Cap. Um, the horse, of course, we saw do so well at the Breeders' Cup. We got to meet and visit um, with Papa Cap and his owners and trainers here in the Ocala Marin County area, as well as chat to Mark Cassie about him and um, also his exercise rider, who was the trainer of the Zebra and the Zebra <laughs> Stripes racing movie as well, which is really cool. Um, but getting just to get a chance to meet Papa Cap and really uh, wish Mark Cassie all the best. We love to see the Florida breads in there. Uh, but a couple of others that we obviously were excited about all the Ocala connections. So if we don't mention you this time, you know you're going to get mentioned and harassed in the upcoming weeks. Um, but very excited that Susan Montaigne, who of course was the exercise rider of American Pharaoh and the Catherine Brothers, um, she actually trained Cyberknife, who is in the top 20 currently for the Kentucky Derby, which is um, very exciting. Good for and her. My, yeah. <laughs> she for is her. the exercise rider who was on American Pharaoh when all the top yeah. trainers came to the McCathen farm to look at him and decide if they wanted him. And she was, you know, having to hold him back because he was uh, something else. And then I got a shout out for Tammy Bobo, my real good friend, Tammy Bobo. I don't hang out with her enough because neither of us have any spare time. But Tammy Bobo is an absolutely beautiful human being, lovely, kind soul. And um, Simplification, a horse trained by her, Um, is actually number six right now on the Derby Trail. So that's pretty exciting stuff. And if you don't know, Tammy Bobo is actually who I got my miniature horse from, Montego Bay. Um, Mm -hmm. So Montego Bay will definitely be cheering her on from the field. He'll probably be running up and down um, for simplification. So um, that's very exciting, in my opinion, uh, to, uh, to have a dear friend have done so well and have a horse their place right now in points and number six so we'll have to have steve haskin on the show for sure next week 
um, to fill us in on the um, on the Derby Trail and on his favourites. Uh, of course, the the Bob Baffert saga has certainly surrounded this whole thing, and it's been quite sad to see him uh, not able to run. But um, but anyway, the Derby still the Derby. So we're on the Derby Trail, and we'll keep you posted as the Ocala Marion County connections. Natalie and I will be back. We actually have a couple of segments now. Uh, one coming up with Dr. Kayot, and he's going to be talking about horse joints. And then we have a couple with uh, the people from the Mustang movie that we went to in Wellington. So we're going to share those with you. And then Natalie and I will be talking about the Green Pharmacist. So stay with us on the Horse Talk Show. We'll be right back. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to FeedDAC.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. With over 70 years of collective experience in the horse industry, Lip Chip was built with integrity by horsemen for horsemen. Introducing the Chip Link system, powered by Lip Chip, where a 15 digit unique ID becomes a key to unlock not only identity, but also health paperwork, owner information, and even photos of each horse. So simple, even a child can do it. The future is here. The future is Lip Chip. Enhance your horse's performance, fitness, strength, and rehabilitation with state-of-the-art equipment. ETI treadmills offer the finest European engineering, the highest quality filtration, and no chemicals are required. Follow Equine Therapy International on social media or at equinetherapyint.com. Equine Therapy International provides technologically advanced therapy for horses worldwide. Hey, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show.
Louisa Barton here for the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. We have our regular weekly vet with us in person, Dr. Adam Kayot, and we're going to talk a bit about joints and joint injections. Dr. Kayot, tell us about horse joints. <laughs> horse joints, my favorite kind of joints. <laughs> Uh, horse joints. So, so certainly there's joints all over the horse, you know, just like there are in us. Um, and, and the thing about it is, uh, horse being the, being the athletes that they are, um, they tend to be, uh, one of the most common causes of poor performance is problems with the joints and, and, and they can have all kinds of issues with the joints. Um, <clears throat> particularly the ones we typically worry about a lot are the ones involved with athletic performance. Obviously the ones on the legs, there's multiple joints on the legs from the, from the hoof all the way to the shoulder and all, you know, in the back all the way to the hip. There's, there's plenty of joints that we have to address. Certainly joints in the neck and, and you know, our, 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 our uh, you know, joints along the, along the spine also can be issues as well. Um, <clears throat> so you, you can have all kinds of problems. Obviously arthritis, everybody knows about arthritis. That's just bony chains, bony proliferation in the joints. He agreed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he might even know about it. Uh, so, um, and, and, and that's obviously progression and it, and it typically, typically that is due to um, age related change. Um, certainly if there's been some pathology or infection in the joint or whatever, that can, that can cause, a, 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 an early onset of arthritic change. Um, but, but, you know, we're always trying to minimize that, try to push that change, um, as far back as we can. And, and thus it leads us to maintaining those joints. <clears throat> those joints can be maintained with with um you know supplements and, and and that sort of thing and and that will certainly help you know the joint is made up of of um, obviously bone but on top of that bone is cartilage and then there's obviously lubricant there's there's fluid that's in the joint that helps lubricate the joint and we try to <clears throat> help both the both the lubrication that occurs in the joint and then the the, the health of the cartilage because those are the those are the main main focal points of assault so to speak on the joint from from athletic athletic use um, <clears throat> certainly you, you know just like in people you can have um, uh, ligament tears and meniscal tears and things like that that can that can affect the performance of the horse and and the soundness of the horse um, but most of the time, most of the time, it's just inflammation, you know, in the joint or, or what we call synovitis. So inflammation of the synovium and the synovial fluid and everything around the joint that's there. And, and, you know, we, um, we, uh, we can help that, you know, certainly, certainly it's, it's not uncommon for, for these horses to have their joints injected, just like any athlete, um, they can have their joints injected and those issues that inflammation is addressed, certainly addressed by, um, anti-inflammatories and addressed by, by, um, products that help with the lubrication that occurs in the joint. When a joint is inflamed, the lubrication tend the body produces more lubrication, but the lubrication tends to be of poor quality, it tends to be more watery, less what we call viscous, like oil it should be more oily than watery. And so we try to help that. There's a lot of products out there. Um, you know, for years we've used um, steroid and, and um, you know, hyaluronic acid, which are components of, of the joint fluid. Um, now we're moving into biologicals that we're using, um, where we have, uh, we just, we pull blood from the horse and, and we can process that blood and then place that blood into the joints or, or the processed product, which is basically a plasma serum type thing that we, that we place into the joints that's able to scavenge those inflammatory mediators and remove those. It's, um, I it's, can speak to that personally. Yeah. Yes. My knee. It's amazing. I had the PLP injections in the scar yeah. Yeah. from my car accident yeah. and wow. Yeah. yeah, you didn't do that. Nirvana did that. I but I can speak to that how amazing the after is. I could show you, but I can't. Yeah. But it's incredible. Yeah. So that is a, a an amazing therapy. Well, those those biologics are kind of are, are kind of cutting edge stuff, you know, um, and, and, and the, you know, there's new things coming out all the time. And, and as we as we advance in you know competition down the line we're trying to get away from some of these 
these traditional medications that do have some side effects and and that aren't necessarily great for horses steroids aren't great for the cartilage and the, and the overall cartilage health for the horse so if we can stop doing that certainly there's still a place for that i still use it all the time and i don't necessarily use the biologics <clears throat> all the time <clears throat> but we're trying to we're trying to depending on the situation uh do what's right for the horse at that at that point um but certainly um just like any athlete those horses need to be maintained um i'm a i'm a firm believer in um you know at the Adequan legend products that are out there um they those products work differently Adequan helps with cartilage um repair and and then your legend products work with with the uh, lubrication or the fluid that's produced in the joint so um, those types of things and certainly there's a myriad of other <clears throat> oral uh, joint supplements that I, I don't know necessarily how well they work, but certainly, you know, people can see some clinical improvement from, from those use and, or the use of those products. And, and, um, so you, you know, say if it's working, use it. If it's working, it ain't, <laughs> if it ain't hurting, you know, That's right. use it. That's fine. That's right. Um, so, so there's a lot of things out there and, and, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, you know, uh, for, for the athlete, like I said, one of the, one of the main issues of lameness are, problems with the joints or, or discomfort in the joint and it's just a matter of finding out where that problem is obviously because they can't tell us and that can be a little bit of a process but um, certainly um, if you're able to do that you're able to, to, to maintain the overall joint health you're going to have a successful athlete and one that's able to compete for a long time. And when you do a, a joint injection on a horse, let's say it's a competing horse that's a, a jumping or racing, is there a length of time after that joint injection before the horse can perform again? Certainly, yes, there is. Uh, <laughs> that's the short answer. Yes, there is. <laughs> now, depending on what sport that is or whatever, they have certain withdrawal times um, that they're in certain levels that, that they're uh, uh, allowed to have in the, in the horse. So that just depends on what sport you're in just because you know you're 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 um, um, competing in a grand prix jumping event they might have different rules as opposed to a, you know the kentucky derby or whatever you know so certainly you need to be aware and as a veterinarian you need to be aware of what the what the prospect is for this horse and 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 what they're going to comp be competing in uh, so you can time out your your maintenance your 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 therapy uh properly so that you you can hopefully avoid some of those uh, the downfalls of of, of having a a positive test when you know you're just trying to help the help the patient out right right because it is therapeutic and does make the horse feel better but at the same time you got to be careful about um last question it does the use of and this may be a question you don't know the answer to fair and it would be fair if you didn't but it, i'm curious does the use of lasix or lack of use of lasix make something show up longer or maybe less time because there's a flushing obviously with Lasix and is that a potentially something that people should be more aware of with medications that maybe now Lasix is yes less used that perhaps those times may be less well the, I, I don't know that answer I don't I don't know if that has any effect I mean Lasix has a tendency to dehydrate the horse um, certainly um, uh, because it is a diuretic, it can dehydrate the horse, which would make me think that that whatever blood is there is more concentrated. So if there's anything that's con that happens to be there, any medication that's in the blood, to me, logically, it would be more concentrated or more likely to show up as opposed to a flushing out because it's not necessarily, it's not flushing any of the blood product out. It's just flushing the fluid out that's right. in the blood. Makes so, yeah. so I would think that you'd be more likely to have a positive. Um, you know, drug test or whatever with a horse that's been on Lasix just to the de dehydration factor. Makes sense. Therapeutics, uh, wonderful for horses, but we definitely want them out of the system well before we compete, right? Very important. Dr. Adam Kayot here at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. And Larson Hay, our broadcast and television sponsor, plus supporting sponsors, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Seminole Feed Stores, Piranha, TT Distributors, and the Hilton Garden in downtown Louisville. This show is brought to you in part by Seminole Feed Stores, family owned since 1934. 
manufacturing fixed formula horse feeds with mindful monitoring and quality ingredients right here in Ocala in an all-natural, non-medicated feed mill. Seminole Feed, simply the world's best and safest feed. Like them on Facebook now or find them at SeminoleFeed.com. Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. I'm Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television on all smart TV networks. And we're here in Wellington for the opening of the Mustang movie. I cried my eyes out several times. We've been chatting to a few people here. Now we have the pleasure of talking to Stephen Latham, uh, director and co-producer of the movie. Tell us a little bit about how the movie came to be in the beginning. So I make movies about animals. I love animals and I love filmmaking. And I got introduced to a group that um, pairs up wild horses with veterans. And so I started doing my homework and research. And I said, oh, there's a, there's a big, big story here. And I started my journey because I did not know about wild horses. And uh, two years later, um, the movie is available to be seen. And you can learn the history. You can learn uh, how we got to where we are today and also um, some of the people that are doing something positive to make a difference about wild horses. So coming away from this um, and sharing this, I I've known a lot about Mustangs for a long time. I own one that adopted from the BLM, but I didn't know the extent of what I, the impact of what's actually going on. I didn't realize how big it was. I know that when I adopted Flynn for $25, they said he was on his third strike and he was going to a holding area after that with no future opportunity of belonging to anybody. To me, to see the numbers and for that, for the movie to share the impact of the horse to people who perhaps know even much less than me, I think is huge. Um, going forward as this movie gets out and to the public, what are you sort of hoping the impact is in the, let's say, non-horse population? Well, first of all, how is Flynn? Is Flynn cool? Flynn is amazing. Flynn is only three years old. He's already been to the beach, swam in the sea, been to the trail, had little kids on him. He's the kindest, sweetest horse. We DNA tested him. He's Cirillo and Garicello, all Spanish, Roman nose, probably one of the kindest horses I've ever known in my whole life. An absolute sweetheart, follows me around like a big dog. Well, think about that. For, for, for two tickets to the movie, you got like a, 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 like a life partner. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's part of the story. But, like people like you that adopt, when you, when you hear $25 to get this horse and, and the horse is majestic and you, you're just deeply in love with this horse. So what we want to do is um, by the time most people adopt a horse, they don't realize that journey that that horse has been on. From the history to living in the wild to where there are... People are shocked to learn that there's over 80,000 wild horses on the range right now. In 10 Western states, 80,000. They're out there. We don't, you know, when you're flying over and look down below, there's wild horses in the West below you. And there's over 50,000 in captivity. So what we want to do is, is, is let people know that this is an issue that you probably don't know about. And then once you do find out about it, you want to be like, well, what can I do? And I think th there's important things to do. Um, letting the, Probably the most important thing is to let your elected official know 
uh, that you care about this issue because this is the, all roads lead back to Washington, D.C. because they are managed by Congress and the Bureau of Land Management. And these horses, um, the wild horses, they deserve better. And we need to get more people involved to care about this issue. Now, as far as the, they call it gathering, I call it roundup. Um, as far as the roundups go, we see the helicopters, we see sometimes they're on four wheelers chasing these obviously scared horses. Um, through that process, it, that seems alarming, especially to, to me, but I didn't know about the big drought until I watched your movie. So hearing about that, uh, you then have to weigh up the balance of leaving them out there to suffer and die, which could possibly happen if there is a drought or a, a shortage of forage. So is, is there a balance there with that? Is there a better way of rounding them up? Or is that really the only option you have out on the plains with the wild horses? And, and do you think that's something we'll ever see come to an end if we can find a way to manage it better? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the helicopter roundups are terribly upsetting for everybody. Um, I will say this, you know, that we have over 80,000 on the range. The reason that roundups are so pervasive um, before we even talk about the drought is because federal law in the 70s said there should only be around 27,000. So we're essentially, you know, over, you know, you know, 50, almost 50,000 over the number that we're supposed to have. So that's dictating a lot of the policy. Um, so then the question becomes, well, what do we do? Um, some can be rounded up by on horseback with others, but you're dealing with roundups that can be 500 to, to 1,000 at a time. And the BLM has found that the most efficient way is to do it by helicopter, especially because they're in such remote areas. Um, you know, a lot of people that hate helicopter roundups are even saying that they're necessary because of the super drought that you mentioned. The super drought's real and it's not getting better and it's impacting food and water in these areas. Um, so when you combine that and combine the federal law that says there should only be 27,000, we need to add into the mix fertility control, which we show in the film, is to try to drop the birth rate of foals on the range. Um, but I don't think when you have these large roundups, um, I think helicopters are going to be around for a while, which is why we say they need to be managed on the range better to stop or lower the number of, of roundups. Nobody likes them. Nobody likes roundups. Nobody likes the helicopters being used. Um, but when you're trying to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of horses into a pen, some of them to be treated with fertility control and be released, there's not a more efficient way of doing it. Um, and do horses get injured? Yeah, they do. They do get injured on it. And um, there hasn't been a better way of doing it. Some people said use ATVs, those little like, right. um, but or on horseback. But uh, if those worked really well, they'd be used more. Um, so we're, we're just dealing with something that nobody likes. You know, something that I hadn't thought of, love of a horse for me my entire life since I, before I could walk. But I never really thought about the history of the American horse until your movie. And your movie kind of brought that home to me that that is so much of the history of the United States of America. When I think as a little girl watching John Wayne with my dad in England, that to me was part of the Great West, you know. And so I, that was another big impact for me of the movie as well. Wow. Not just horses we love, not just amazing, majestic creatures, but part of American history. Well, it's, it certainly is. It's, it's part of our collective past. And, you know, what's amazing to me is um, there is a lot of people um, romanticize the West and romanticize um, cowboys. Uh, the West and the cowboy is a mythology. It's a huge mythology. And what's really sad to me, um, which, you know, I made this film and I, and I really get uh, emotional about it, is the, um, the idea that there were 2 million wild horses in 1900 in America, 2 million. No and in about 40 years, we killed them off to almost 10,000. So something that we love to revere and something that we hold up as, uh, as American values is something that we slaughtered indiscriminately. And you could make the case that the Mustang should be the national animal, not the bald eagle. The Mustang represents everything about America. I'm for that. <laughs> <laughs> the Mustang, I, I, the Mustang is noble and strong and tough, and I love the Mustang. And uh, but yeah, it, and it's um, it's been a real tragedy, and it's really a story of mismanagement and a story of abuse. Um, and I keep coming back to it. everyone, um, just like when it comes to veterans issues, everyone would love to tie uh, you know a ribbon around a tree, or they'll put a um, a bumper sticker say support our troops. 
but then they don't do anything about it. And with wild horses, we need to we need to activate people. We need to care about this issue. Uh, it's um, it's a sad state of affairs right now. Uh, the Mustangs deserve better. Um, they're a beautiful animal, and I hope people get to meet them. So do I. That's wonderful. Stephen Latham, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for an incredible movie, an eye-opener even to a horse person and a, and a Mustang owner myself. So much to learn, such an incredible story. Anytime you can uh, enjoy a movie and also cry several times, I always think you've accomplished great things. So, well, thank you for yes. <laughs> Yeah, Thank really you am. so much, so. and thanks for having us here. Stephen Latham here in Wellington, Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television. Current equine microchips can migrate by up to 30%, causing difficulty when scanning. With over 70 years of collective horse industry experience, Lipchip offers a new, more effective method of microchipping, partnering with veterinarians and technology experts to ensure humane and practical microchipping. Lipchip was built by horsemen for horsemen. Nowadays, the performance horse industry is in need of both integrity and transparency. Lipchip is the future of horse microchipping, with cutting edge technology functional for every discipline. Find Lipchip on social media and for more information, lipchipllc.com. The future is here. The future is Lipchip. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to feeddac.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. World Class Equine Rehab Promoting Faster Recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy and Underwater Treadmill, a Salt Water Spa, an Aqua Pacer, Magna Wave, a Vibration Plate, Swimming Pool, Massage and Laser Therapies. With post-surgical care, memberships, packages and BOGOs, EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa and our television broadcast sponsor. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? Well, listen to this. With your host, Louisa Barton. What does it feel like to be in love with a horse? Presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Back in the saddle again. Now, here's your pretty, pretty Louisa Barton. You're fab, you're switched on, you're a bit of all right, yes! <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. I'm Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television on all smart TV networks. And we're here for the opening of an incredible movie about the Mustangs, about the wild horses of America. It's been incredible. I cried my eyes out four times. I'll admit it. I own a BLM Mustang. So um, certainly my heart is in it with the horses. And we're here with Chris Hyde now um, after the movie. And I, I kind of want to get a little bit of feedback from him, first of all, um, about the impact of the movie and what it kind of means to him. Chris, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, I th this movie, I mean, I've gotten a lot of people that come and want to do movies. And, you know, there's a lot of passion in it. But this one, you know, it was a professional. It, you know, he was looking at it as a, from a serious perspective. He wasn't an advocate in this, but so he wanted to present it in a, you know, in a bipartisan, I'm going to pull my political side out of here, effort to this because the wild horse issue is very divided right now. You've got activists attacking activists because some activists want to leave them alone and let them grow and let them populate. And you've got the other side, which realize they want them to be free, but there is going to be a point where the government's going to say enough's enough. There's too many out there. Uh, there's a drought. 
there's all of these other resources that are being impacted, so they're gonna do something dramatic and dangerous. And that's what we're trying to avoid, is to get to a point where the wild horses are safe and can live free, not be rounded up, not run into the face or fear of slaughter with this. So I think this movie does a really good job at showing the difficulties that wild horses face. Um, you can't just walk away. There, there has to be something done to ensure that they're there for the future. And I, you know, that's what, that's what scared me. I was much more rigid with how I saw wild horses. I early started on, leave them alone. But then I realized, you know, they're gonna get killed. Uh, honestly, killed. until I saw this movie, I was, I had the same mindset, just leave them be. But I see the situation could get out of control then there not be enough water and forage for them and then they could suffer. So it's actually better if there's some controlled um, contraception, if you want to call it that, um, whether it is castrating the males or what those wonderful group of ladies was doing. And, and I had a question about that. So on the legal side of that, if let's say Gigi and I decided to get guns and and the the medication to sterilize the mares and we went running around doing that it obviously there have to be some laws against that and you have to go through the federal government to do that is that the way that yeah, works you have to go through the bureau of land management and they they don't discourage it you you go to training and i think they mentioned one of the women on the, in that was in, in montana and has developed and maintains the uh, she said, I can never remember, and I've been doing it for 20 some years, what PZP stands for. <laughs> it's the fertility control. It's reversible. It's, it's fine uh, to use. It's not long lasting, which is like they're working on kind of coming up with a long lasting thing. But the, the, the BLM doesn't discourage. If you go out and train and you register to do it, uh, they're looking for that kind of thing. My complaint is they're not looking that hard. You know, that's the frustrating thing is that they put money aside for fertility control, but they do very little of it. And actually, we've got some activists who've been pushing, you know, they're really proud. They got $11 million in, the, in this budget to do fertility control. I'm like, but that means the BLM could do three horses and get through that money and say, well, we did it. We did what you wanted. I want, I don't want to put a dollar amount on it. Every single horse you touch, every mare must be given fertility control, period. You know, so that's the thing is kind of changing that mindset you know, with them. But I, there is hope. And actually, I mean, you mentioned the fertility control. I'm actually a, a veteran. I heard several people yell out for Marines. I was in the Army. I have to give them a credit for that. Uh, but I'm actually looking at starting a, a company to do veterans to do fertility control because they're trying to get them involved in that and give them a job to come out. So that's why I'm starting a company that we can get them trained and get them out on the range, you know, and be able to go anywhere, you know, to do this because PCP works on elephants and deer. That's a way to control deer populations so they don't have to go out and hunt deer in small towns. So there's a lot of great opportunities. We just have to do it. Right. And it makes so much sense to me when I hear $50,000 for the life of a horse that ends up being kept in a feedlot, not being loved by an individual, not being trained for another career. To me, that's very sad that $50,000 could so much better be used in a program to fertilize the mares, not to not to end the herds in the wild, but to make them manageable to a number where they can be comfortable and safe and have a good life. Absolutely. And we want to do that. I mean, Return to Freedom, which was part of the film who I work with, um, you know, they manage a very large herd, but they do want them to reproduce you, because some of them are very traditional Spanish herds that we still know that were released by the Spanish um, with that. And I should say release there's always clarification with wild horses get picked on. They are a reintroduced native species. And I think, you know, Netta mentioned it. Wild horses evolved in North America. If they weren't here, they wouldn't be anywhere else in the world. So when everybody else says that horses are an invasive, feral species, they're just ignorant. They just don't know it, that horses evolved here. So these wild horses fit within our ecosystem out west. Absolutely. My uh, Mustang is a, we did the DNA as a Cirillo and Garicello. So all Spanish, Spanish nose. Yeah. And they're amazing. So you want to maintain that, you know, because, you know, I mean, but even if a, her a horse was let loose or got out 10 years ago or 20 years ago and lives on BLM land, they're by law a wild horse. And to me, they should be, you know, because they're amazing. You know, uh, with all of those, uh, you know, their ability to survive and thrive. They certainly know. are. Tell us as a community here in Wellington, obviously a huge equestrian community, uh, us from Ocala, the horse capital, another huge equestrian community. How can we help? What can we do? What are, what are things that we can help you to accomplish these goals? It's so important that we keep this big piece of our very important history alive. And when I think of the, I think, 8 million horses that died in the 
First and Second World War, I think about what horses have done for us, you know, civilization born on their backs, wars fought on their backs. I think what can we do for these horses to make their lives better, longer and healthier? Well, I think you always have the basic, you know, write letters, reach out to your congressman, talk about it. But we have to take it beyond that, um, you know, because as I alluded to in the thing, you know, you, we know everybody knows Wild Horse Annie. She's kind of a favorite thing with this. But there were also very big political people behind her in Washington that were making this stuff happen. We're getting legislators because the problem with the, and I, you know, coming from the animal movement, it's remarkably weak. Everybody loves animals, but when it comes down to something, animals get pushed under the bus at the last minute. It's like, well, we love them but I'm worried about my health care or taxes or roads getting paved. And it's like, well, you know, you have the ability to do more than one thing at a time. You know, you can save these wild horses. So certainly from, the, from these communities, which are, you know, you can't define horse communities in the, you know, the United States without saying Ocala and Wellington with this, you know, and, and, and people underestimate that with Florida. It's a big, big horse state uh, with all of this. But I, you know, so it's raising that. It's getting these major owners who have these political connections uh, you know, that can get out to these members of Congress, because that's who members of Congress will listen to, you know, are the major horse owners, you know, who have, you know, interest in business and hire people, you know, and have a say in the community. That's what we need. They need to step up and say enough's enough to their politicians to say, you know, you've got a solution. We've got a solution. We've given them one. It's there. You can manage these horses humanely. We can stop the roundups. You know, we, we did a proposal. If you do it all right, you're going to have to remove some because the numbers are so high. But if you get them to a level and you do the fertility control, it will stabilize. You won't have the millions of dollars going to these roundups. So there's a solution. It's just pounding the BLM on the head to get them to do it. And right now, just calling and complaining and, you know, saying we love horses. It's not enough. It's not, enough. Right. It's not going to accomplish anything. And right. so we have to ratchet it up. We have to take it beyond that to say, you know, enough's enough, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're going to vote you out of office. I mean, I tell activists that. I'm like, don't write Congress now. <laughs> Go to the town hall meeting and say, right. I'm a voter. If you don't do this, I'm going to get all my friends and we're going to organize. That would scare them because our numbers are big. And if they realize they're going to lose their job for doing it, right now they realize they're not going to lose their job. Right. They're like, uh, yeah, you know. So Final thoughts and any websites, Chris, if you can share with us that people can go to to find out more information. I think the best thing is Return to Freedom. Uh, you can go to, ret to returntofreedom.org, and they have all of the information. They have it on wild horses, horse slaughter. You can go to their sanctuary in California and see, you know, the horses in the wild. You can probably set up a time to watch them being darted, you know, for this and getting a tr really true, uh, you know, feel for it and see what's going on and seeing them in the wild. You know, they're still controlled to some extent, but it gives you that experience. And they've got spirit, actually, you know, from the movie, the yeah. spirit. Yeah, he's, yeah he, he was not happy to see me when I did get to see him once. And I see little kids petting him. I'm like, clearly he knows, you know, with that. But it's, you know, it's a great experience to go out and see it, you know, and with your wild horses, yeah. you know, and the wild horses that you can bring to the events. I mean, it's just, they're, they're just amazing. It's a great experience. Yeah. Chris Heidemann, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, we're definitely on your side. We're all about the love of the horse. So thank you for, for sharing your story and this amazing movie that made me cry. Wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Louisa Barton here for Echoes Television and the Horse Talk Show in Wellington. Thank you to our presenting sponsors of this half of the show, Palm Chevrolet and Larson Hay. Also, thank you to our supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, Equine Performance in Innovative Center, and Summit Joint Performance. This hour of the Horse Talk Show is presented by Palm Chevrolet in Ocala, where the entire team is committed to making your experience in sales and service hassle-free and easier than ever with no games or gimmicks. Come in and visit on Southwest College Road or online at palmchevrolet.com. A second-to-none experience with all the amenities. Palm Chevy, find new roads. Nirvana, Ocala's premier medical spa, is leading the way in great skin with all the newest in treatment options, offering prejuvenation for younger clients and rejuvenation for all ages. Nirvana knows you want to look your very best, but we've all seen people with the telltale signs of too much work. We want you to look like you, just better, brighter and younger, with all the newest and best in technology and all in the most beautiful surroundings. Like Nirvana Medical Spa on Facebook and find them on the web at nirvanamedicalspa.com. Become a better, brighter and younger you. 
Piranha, your trusted leader in insect control for 50 years. The official fly spray for World Equestrian Center. From the strongest water-based equine spray in the blue bottle to the familiar and longtime favorite in the yellow bottle. Wipe and spray, we've got you covered. If you're looking for effective plant-based fly spray, then look for our zero bite in the green bottle. Check us out online at piranhainc.com. That's P-Y-R-A-N-H-A, piranhainc.com, to learn more about Piranha's entire family of products. Piranha, it works. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest, Alfalfa. Louisa Barton here, host and executive producer of the Horse Talk Show, in the studio with Dr. Natalie Solomon. And she is a doctor of pharmacy, and she owns The Green Pharmacist. And we're going to be chatting to her a little bit in this segment about what she does. But first of all, so I don't forget, I want to reach down here and get her her piranha goodie bag, which we always love to hold up because all you can see is the piranha. Oh, that is, that is <laughs> the so cool. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> so there's some goodies in here for you. Um, actually, through some lip chip goodies from Lip Chip LLC in the very top for you. So there is a cap and a t-shirt as well as a lip chip chapstick. I always have trouble saying that. Um, <laughs> But there's a lot of great, great um, products in here from Piranha Shine, Baby Shine, Equine Spray and White. There's a um, Legacy and a Odor Way, which is fantastic for helmets and oh. um, shoes and things like that that get smelly. So Thank there you. Is your Piranha goodie bag. Thank you and of so course, much. They do these Piranha Fly Spray Fly Master systems for the barns as well, which are fantastic. So. First of all, we have a couple of segments left of the show, so I kind of want to start at the beginning and have you just tell us a little background about you. Okay. Um, so I went to the University of Florida, graduated pharmacy school um, in 2013, and I've been working in a pharmacy since I was 16 years old. It's all I know. I've had horses my whole life, and I wanted to do something uh, that kind of combined both. And I loved helping people. But, and I love helping animals, and I wanted to put my degree to good use. And I had anxiety in the past, and I found a lot of relief from CBD products. And I felt that I wanted to help other people find relief as well. So I started with a human line, and um, that's how the Green Pharmacist came to life. And I decided to pursue the equine side. So, of course, my horses became my patients, <laughs> and um, I started... It's good to have good guinea pigs, right? Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, I have a lot of compounding background, so I, you know, used a lot of, you know, similar formulations that were already on the market and wanted to make sure I could come up with something that was very safe for my animals to use uh, with simple organic and lab-tested hemp and I wanted to share it with the world. So this is how Equigreen came to life, and um, as well as my human line, and now we have a dog line, so mm -hmm. it's called Canine Green. So that <laughs> recently launched, and um, it's now we're helping the rider, the horse, and the companion animals. So we're taking <laughs> care of- The bond buddy too, yes. you gotta get the bond buddy in there. <laughs> that's right, that's right. They're all family, and they all rely on us, so. Um, I'm happy to help the whole family. <laughs> so this is um, a line for both, for people, for animals, for dogs. You not necessarily replacing anything that people are already doing, but complementing um, whatever mm -hmm. they're already doing. So not necessarily telling people you to change everything, but this is something that can actually, if you're already using a line of supplements and you're very happy with them, there's no need for you to make a massive change. This right. is basically to complement whatever you're you're doing already mm -hmm. with your with your animals so um, start with tell us about people because obviously equestrians are always either stressed or anxious <laughs> yes. because we own horses <laughs> which is uh, something uh, and if they're competing they certainly have that mm -hmm. concern as well 
how do these products work for equestrians who are competing? Is, are there any concerns for either equestrians or equines? Is there a certain amount of time they have to not be using the products before they're in competition? Mm -hmm. And, and what, t tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we uh, recently started doing some studies on blood and uh, we have found that level one and level two do not test in blood. Um, and they're very effective for what you're trying to accomplish with CBD. If you decide to resort to anything higher level three or the Zen, uh, that does run a risk of showing in the blood. Okay. Um, mainly because it's dose related and also because the Zen has um, a different ingredient in it that's called Delta-8 THC that is also formulated from CBD or the hemp plant. Um, the relief is interesting because it is not CBD, it is CBG. G. CBG? Yes, so okay. it's cannabigerol. So as of right now, there's no testing panels that are available to test for this. That may change in the future. It's still very new in the equine industry. So if you were to be tested on this as of right now, there's nothing, nothing. that would show because they don't know what they're testing for at the moment. They either test for THC or CBD at the moment. So, so what is CBG as compared to CBD? So CBD is cannabidiol. Um, so the hemp plant generates a large amount of CBD. Well, where does CBD come from? CBD comes from CBG. So we call it the mother cannabinoid. Um, so it's very, uh, it's harder to extract from the plant and there's less of it in the plant because most of it by the time it's harvested is already has turned into CBD. So they have to extract it from the plant earlier to yield a higher CBG content. Um, so the CBG has been found to be more of a potent anti-inflammatory cannabinoid um, over the CBD. So the relief targets more inflammation within the horse. Um, and of course, inflammation can come from many different sources. Right, so, isn't almost everything that ails us inflammation pretty much? <laughs> yes, inflammation. It either starts with inflammation or it causes inflammation. <laughs> and inflammation is very destructive when it's there for a very long period of time. And it's something, this is a natural remedy um, to counteract that. And your horse will bloom beautifully on it and it will reverse that inflammation and usually the results are within weeks. So I've, it's actually one of my favorite formulations because uh, most horses that I deal with or most of my clients deal with, they're performance horses and they all have inflammation. Right. And a lot of the anxiety is due from inflammation and pain that they suffer from. So by fixing that, you in turn fix the anxiety or the you know, favoring that the horse may have or the, scare, the scariness they may have. Or, or any anxiety in, introduced, you know, from their performance. So that is uh, one of my favorite formulations. So tell us about level one, level two, level three, and I'm not sure how many minutes we have left in this segment. If we run out, we'll, we'll definitely come back and, and continue on here. But um, I see level one, level two, level three. What is the, the difference? Is level one a lower a dose that you <laughs> kind of start with and then you build up to two and three? Or do you ever just start people uh, on two and three just because they're, they're, ready, they're ready for that or they need that? Is that kind of how that works? So my idea with the levels was to create a system approach for the consumer because there is no guidebook for CBD for anyone, for a person, for a dog, for a horse. So the, the best way is to start low and titrate up okay. in any organism. So we're going to start with level one and just based off the feedback and the science that we have been accumulating, level one, most horses stay on it. About 80% of horses stay on level one and just do beautifully on it. And that is 1,000 milligrams of CBD per container. So that is why we call it level one. And then, so after 30 days, you feel there's room for improvement, the next step would be level two. Uh, so if you weren't getting as much result mm -hmm. as you might, then you would go Correct. up to level mm -hmm. two. Okay. That's right. So I always wait, wait till you finish your first bottle before making a judgment. And then after completing your first bottle, if you want to go back to, you know, roll up to level two, 
go up to level two. After starting level two, if you feel it's too much, you can always back off to level one. So it gives you a good sliding scale between the lit levels. Um, most horses don't ever really go on level three. I find that it's That's very extreme, small. It? Yeah, it's 3,000 milligrams on the level three and 2,000 on the level two. Um, so the other 20% of horses do fall within level two or three, but out of that 20%, it's a lot lower in the level three. So um, that's why we say start with level one and, and work your way up. And it doesn't matter what kind of horse, the weight of the horse, the fat cotton of the horse, or what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, use the system approach method and you will, f you will land in one of the levels for your horse. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. We have to go to break. We are going to come right back uh, with Natalie and chat some more before we close out the show. On I've got a few more questions I'd like to ask. Stay with us on the Horse Talk Show. We'll be right back. Thank you to our presenting sponsors of this half of the show, Palm Chevrolet and Larson Hay. Also, thank you to our supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, Equine Performance and Innovative Center, and Summit Joint Performance. Hi, I'm Alan Davies with Equine Therapy International. Today we're at Engineered Equine Performance celebrating the new saltwater chilled treadmill. This particular chilled equine saltwater treadmill is a game changer. As you can see, the finest materials are used, the filtration system, coarse, fine filtration, no chemicals. We use UV, ozone, combination of filtration to keep the highest water chemistry standards. Being a saltwater unit, only the finest stainless steel and materials are used. That's important when it comes to longevity and cost of service over the life of the unit. This unit also has integrated massage jets with fine bubbles and coarse air bubbles for the therapy. The control system on this is Siemens industrial grade, top of the line technology, straight from Germany, but also serviceable here in the US. World-class equine rehab promoting faster recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy and underwater treadmill, a saltwater spa, an aqua pacer, magna wave, a vibration plate, swimming pool, massage, and laser therapies. With post-surgical care, memberships, packages, and BOGOs, EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. This show was brought to you in part by TT Distributors, dedicated to bringing their customers the largest selection of quality horse supplements, products, and farrier supplies in Florida at affordable prices. Also online at ttdistributors.com. This show is brought to you in part by Summit Joint Performance, promoting a healthy, thick synovial fluid, decreasing inflammation in the joints and improving the cushioning properties of the cartilage pads. All age horses can benefit from Summit Joint Performance. My name is Dr. Natalie Solomon. I formulated Equigreen with cutting edge science and technology alongside the passion that is represented by a lifelong love of horses. I created a product that I would trust for my horses because they deserve nothing but the best for their bodies. Horses rely on us to take care of them, to love them, to respect them. This is how Equigreen came to life. Equigreen, CBD for your horse that you can trust. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the final segment this week of the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our TV broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. I'm Louisa Barton in the studio. I have Dr. Natalie Solomon here with me, and we've been talking about CBD, something I think that people definitely need to learn more about. I had a ton of questions. Um, <laughs> I want to ask um, very quickly about the, the relief and the zen, and then I want to talk about these here as well. So... Mm -hmm. Um, the relief compared to the level one, two, and three, the difference is? So it depends what you're targeting. If your sole purpose is inflammation, I would route you towards the relief. Okay. Um, if you want more general health, so if you want to do a little bit of everything, calming, support joints, support tendons, recovery time after an injury, um, gastric health is huge, uh, skin and coat. 
I would go the level one, two, and three route. Um, so if you're trying to accomplish more, um, but if you really want to target inflammation, I would go straight to the relief. Okay, good. And then the Zen? The Zen is specially formulated for calming. So that's so, the calming behavior. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you find yourself having to use medications like chlorpromazine, reserpine, and you want to go a natural way, I would suggest trying the Zen. The okay. Zen is um, so the Zen very is beneficial. just more to get the horse. You're going out on the trail, it's a little mm -hmm. bit excitable and things like Correct. that. Yes. How fast does the Zen work? Is that something you need to be doing daily or something you can do right before a, a trail ride, let's say? So the formulation was uh, generated for a daily use. Uh, CBD stores in your fat, so it has... You got plenty of that. <laughs> <laughs> we, all girls do. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it helps if it's used daily because it's stored in your body. But I do have several clients that they'll use a syringe, they'll fill up the 30cc mark, pre, pre, use it pre-race, pre-performance, and it works just as good. So I think the Zen is more versatile for as needed and for daily use, either or. Wonderful. Okay. Tell us about what we have up here in the front. Um, I actually am using the CBD face cream, which I'm in <laughs> love with, is absolutely amazing. <laughs> and I've actually been putting it on some scars and finding that it's actually working on scars because mm -hmm. it's bringing down a lot of the puffiness. So, and I'm loving what it's doing with my under eyes. I left it in Wellington by mistake and I'm quite upset with myself. But anyway, um, <laughs> tell us about the gummies and then we have the liquid up here uh, in the dropper and then we also have um, this relief roll-on gel which I'm really wanting to try as well um, and need right now. So um, tell us about these. Sure. So I brought my most commonly sold products. Um, so the vegan gummies are great. They're straight CBD so it's, um, it's what we call isolated CBD. So all the you know the small amounts of THC Mind or any if I parts. Open and try? Yeah, go Is ahead. Okay? Go ahead. Yeah. You, you already and told me you were giving me this one. Yeah, so that to one's try, yours. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it and try it on yes. air. Yes. I can tell you what it tastes like then. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go okay, ahead. If they pass your your <laughs> yes. palate test, please. I will if I can. Uh, there we go. Ooh, <laughs> but they look nice. They're um, vegan, and uh, so if you're worried, there's a just I think just a little bit of sugar in there. Uh, mm. you're, they're very tasty. They're my favorite. It's That's my delicious. personal use. <laughs> yes. Mm. And they're great for, um, you know, if you for calming. They're great for inflammation, any kind of pain or discomfort. And some people love them for sleep. Oh. So they deliver 25 milligrams of isolated CBD. So if you're worried about drug testing or anything employer related where, you know, CBD is a concern for you, this would be a great product because you this so has you zero THC in it. Take one or two, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I'll try one more flavor. Sure. You're going to sleep delicious. good tonight. I know. <laughs> Something I never do, by the way. Let me try That's an orange. Orange. Red's my favorite. Mm. <laughs> These are delicious. <laughs> so Who's this? this? So this is a client's horse. Um, his name is Bodacious. He's a 21-year-old quarter horse. He used to be a rope barrel horse, performing horse, and he has Cushing's. And about three months ago, um, she reached out to me and said that her horse is dropping weight out of nowhere. You know, they checked his teeth. They did just, you know, some blood work. They thought he had an infection because he had um, a slight cut on his hock. And um, so I said, well, why don't we put him on Equigreen? And we put him on level one. And three months later, this is the same horse. Not even three months, maybe uh, 45 days, God. 60 days maybe. Um, so he is blooming. He is back to his normal weight and some, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And he is happy. So, and he she's going to continue on Equigreen because um, it's really been a game changer for her horse. He looks more bodacious than ever. <laughs> 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 so, um, the roll on. The roll-on is uh, great for topical. This one is uh, 1,500 milligrams, and um, I used to create. I used to have a cream, but I took some feedback from my clients, and they said they had trouble applying it, so I changed it into a roller. 
Um, so it's a gel roller, has good absorption. It gets, you know, you can kind of press the roller into the point of interest and really deliver a good amount of CBD in that local area. So if you're having localized pain, you know, joint pain or anything local, this is your, your way to go, you know. <laughs> good target. Yes, I've been having that all day, actually. <laughs> I was about to text Maria and say, Maria, I need a massage. I'm in pain right now. So you might want to roll some of that on me after the show. So... <laughs> So you've been doing this for how long, and, and these are produced where? These are produced locally in Ocala. I've been doing this since 2019. That's so awesome. Yes. Made and right here in Ocala. Did you hear that? Yes. That's super um, cool. Um, we, my husband, he's a, an excellent carpenter, and he built me a beautiful lab. And I do all my compounding and manufacturing right there in Ocala, right here in Ocala on my horse farm. I think that's so, so awesome. It's, you know, it's... Um, what a all. shout out for entrepreneurism yes. right there, <laughs> kicking in for big, big time. I think that's amazing. You can, you can do that right here and make quality products and, yes. and certainly very professionally and well done. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. So what is there anything else that you want to share with us about? So you've got people covered, so you can take care of the equestrian, you've got the horse covered, and then you've got the four-legged barn bunny, mm -hmm. the dog, taken care of as well with all. So you can cover everybody and, yes. and get everybody comfortable, right? And sleeping good. And, That's right. Mm -hmm. And calmer. Yes. Amazing. It, I, I enjoy it. I get, you know, taxes and messages from people of how wonderful it's working, you know, and, and it just, it makes me, makes my heart so full. So I appreciate the opportunity to share that here and, um, you know, meeting you as well because it's been great <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> and um tell us like you know website and social media and things like that so i'm on facebook tiktok instagram um my website's the green pharmacist.com there is an e at the end of green um so uh that's just important like that. yeah, yeah just like the that and that is the best mm -hmm. way to get in touch with mm -hmm. me is through email i check it 24 7 so if you have a question about she a does. product she's been like she's on yes. it she doesn't miss anything i don't miss anything <laughs> and i do free consultations you know I'm, I'm not a veterinarian i'm not a medical doctor but um i'm happy to share all of my experiences combined um, pharmacy, you know, if, if it's something for yourself, I screen for drug interactions, I check into all your medications, your health conditions, I make sure CBD is the right fit for you before ever recommending anything for, for yourself and your animals, of course. That's amazing. And your thank heart you. and soul are clearly <laughs> in everything that you do. I want to thank you for being with us. Thank, thank you. you. These are wonderful products. I'm so impressed with them. I love them. Very, very quickly, Tammy Bobo, shout out. We are so proud of you having simplification in that number six spot right now running at the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> We'd love to see you in the winner's circle, beautiful lady. And last but definitely not least, there's somebody in this world who's in the top few who I absolutely adore. Her name is Gigi Rosado. She is the director of this show and my business partner. And it is her birthday this week. So... <laughs> Happy birthday. I happy can't birthday. sing. Yes, I can't sing, so Me I won't. I'm sorry. <laughs> but happy birthday of the seventh, Gigi. We love you. You're amazing. You do a phenomenal job with this show, and we could not live without you. So your family. Whether you're in Ocala, Marion County, the horse capital of the world or not, happy horsing around. Till the same time next week.